I'm greedy. I went to a festival location for dinner and I ate like a glutton. Came back home and was uncomfortable and was also developing pain in the lower abdomen, was nauseous and threw up once. But my little daughter was studying medicine and said, Daddy, you could be having appendicitis. Does that really mean that anybody who gets a pain in the lower abdomen is appendicitis? Hello there, I'm Dr. Purnendu Roy. I'm a surgeon in Genesis Hospital, Kolkata. Today we are going to discuss appendicitis. You know, jokingly someone told me during our medical studies that if a lady gets pain below the navel and if she's not pregnant, you must remove her appendix. But I also remember my professor of surgery's wisdom words because he taught us that the most important training in surgery is to learn when not to do surgery. Well, anybody can be trained to become a surgeon. So let's start now to understand where is this organ appendix? So location wise, it is at the lower end of the cecum. It's like an earthworm kind of a thing and it has a cavity inside, a canal inside, and it's connected to the large intestine at the base of the cecum. It gets its blood supply from appendicular artery. So let's see what is normally a person will present with. The person will have low grade fever, not very high fever with chills and rigors. The main complaint is initially in the beginning pain in and around the navel area till the pain gets localized to the right side lower end of the abdomen. Other than that, the patient might feel nauseous, patient might throw up once or twice and a general sense of not feeling quite well and children and kids will always say that they don't feel like eating, refusal of food. With these symptoms, when a person comes to the doctor, on examinations, the pulse rate will be high, there will be high temperature and clinical examinations when we examine the area in the lower abdomen on the right side, there is a specific point it's called McBurney's point if we connect the navel umbilicus with the anterior superior iliac spine at the top of the bone and if we take two-third on the umbilical side and one-third on the lateral that junction of the point on the line is called McBurney's point that's the base of the appendix where it is lies and if we press on examination in that area the person will yell in pain. Now, other than that examinations, how do we establish the diagnosis? We establish the diagnosis by simple, straightforward uh, blood cell count. White cell count will be high. Any infection, the normal blood count in for white cell is 4,000 to 11,000 and if the white cell count is high, total count, and we need to do an ultrasound examination. An ultrasound examination will identify there might be a thickened inflamed edematous appendicitis. If it is uncomplicated, if surrounding area can have certain fluid collections and if it's a perforated appendix, there can be localized peritonitis with pus formation around that area. If the diagnosis is confirmed, appendicitis, then there is no other things. If it is diagnosed within 24 to 48 hours, the appendix should be removed and it's called appendectomy or appendicectomy, any one of these. Now, Operative procedure is of two types. One is it can be done laparoscopically. 
We can put in a small incision in the navel, put the laparoscope inside with the camera. We can visualize the inside of the appendix and with two other small ports, we can dissect out, ligate the appendicular artery, ligate at the base of the appendix and cut the appendix and take it out through the small ports. There are certain times when we might not be able to do it laparoscopically, that in case there are severe adhesions, in case there is perforated gangrenous and it needs a lot of washing and peritoneal cleaning up, and in case the adhesions are so dense that it is difficult to do laparoscopically, in that case a small conventional traditional incision is made and the appendix can be removed. There are a few other things that I want a word of caution that whenever we doubt in a lady, the gynecological history has to be taken properly because if there is an infection in the this PID we call pelvic inflammatory disease, if there is infection in the tubes and the ovary on the right side, the symptoms, features, white cell count, pain, tenderness, all will be more or less same. It's just that we should not knock off a normal appendix. I checked it up in the internet. The number of appendix that are removed, on an average, 15 to 25% on pathological examinations, they turned out to be normal appendix. Now, many people also justify that it is, if the suspicion is strong and you remove the appendix, it's still better than missing out a bad appendix and it ruptures and becomes gangrenous and peritonitis and that becomes scary. There's another thing I want people to remember is about ectopic pregnancy. Now, many times we have faced this situation that the young girl is very reluctant to give the history properly. Now, in case if the period is overdue and we, we should not do an appendicectomy without doing an ultrasound, there can be an ectopic pregnancy in the tubes and sometimes this can be very dangerous. And I don't know how many people have had the experience. I have never had the experience of situs inverses for appendix, but I am a very regular laparoscopic surgeon for gallbladder, and I have removed about nine or 10 gallbladders in situs inverses, which is a condition when all the organs are reversed, which means the liver will be on the left side, the appendix will be on the left side. So this is a condition which is quite well known. It can be only the abdominal organs can be reversed or there is a condition called situs inversus totalis in which the heart is instead of left is on the right hand side. Now, why one should remember this? Because if a person comes and tells I've got pain in the left side over here, and we examine, we will never even think of appendicitis, thinking that appendix has to be on the right hand side. So keep all these things in mind. Anybody can take out an appendix, but don't miss out something different. And also there are possibilities that if we do not take the proper precautions and if we do not do the operation within 24 to 48 hours, it forms an appendicular lump and no heroic adventurous attempt should be made. Once the lump has been formed, there can be more complications out of it. People should not take any surgery as a very minor surgery or nothing very to be worried about because every surgery has its own risk. So my word of caution is we should remove appendix only when we know that it is appendicitis, not just because there is a pain and there is a tenderness without establishing the diagnosis. Anesthesia is safe. There was a concept in the past 
that if a person is getting a surgery done under general anesthesia, also knock off the appendix. Many people even now comes and asks that anyway, doctor, you are removing the gallbladder, why don't you remove the appendix? People will say that while removing the uterus, you also remove the appendix. This is not done anymore. The reason is the chances of you getting an appendicitis in your lifetime may be 0 0.000 some one percent or something like that. But a complication of appendicectomy operation is much higher than that. So when there is no appendicitis, just prophylactically, just because you're having a surgery, appendix should not be removed. So now you have understood? So if you have pain abdomen or anybody who has pain abdomen, where to come? Come to Dr. Purnendu Roy in Genesis Hospital, Kolkata. We should be able to take care, establish the diagnosis and do exactly what is necessary to do. And if you like this video, please share with others, subscribe to my channel and keep watching such interesting medical videos and topics in the next upcoming videos.